In this video, I'm gonna show you the different types of energy source that you can use in your brewery so that you can choose the right one for your brewery build project. Let's get brewing. G'day, I'm Hendo, I'm from Rockstar Brewer. I help craft brewers all over the world brew award-winning beer through quality, consistency, and passion. When planning a brewery build project, one of the key decisions you're gonna to have to make is which type of energy source your brew house and your hot liquor tank are going to run. Work production and heating hot liquor are very, very energy intensive propositions. So it's really important that you make the right choice to save you some headaches in the future. And you need to do that in a way that's cost efficient, both in terms of the build cost, and you also need to be mindful of the running costs as well, because in a lot of cases, energy isn't cheap. Depending upon the energy source that you choose for your brewery, some can be quite cheap to buy, while others are more expensive to buy and commission. The engineering decisions that you need to make can be quite confusing for somebody who's never built a brewery before. If you get this right, you'll create a balance between build costs and running costs, and you'll set your brewery up for long-term rapid growth. If you don't undertake a proper analysis of which energy source is right for you, then you might wind up spending too much money on capital costs, or down the track, you might wind up spending too much money on energy and labor costs. And if this happens, your brewery won't be as profitable as it could be. It's really important that you don't treat your brewery build project like a big home brew kit, because at the end of the day, you're trying to create a brewing business. Helping my clients build their dream brewery is something that I do every day. So if you like what you're seeing here on the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's take a look at the three different types of energy source you'll encounter when you're building your brewery. And they are electric, gas direct fired and steam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rate each type of brew house according to a few metrics. Firstly, we're gonna take a look at the procurement costs. So how much it actually costs to buy the equipment. Secondly, we're gonna look at the commissioning costs. So commissioning costs is how much it actually costs to install and set up the equipment. Thirdly, we're gonna have a look at the running costs. So that's things like energy uh, and all the other incidentals when you're actually running the brewery. And lastly, we're gonna have a look at scalability and flexibility. So scalability and flexibility is either how small or how big the equipment can be, and also whether you can do things like step mashing and other sorts of things when you're making your beer. So I'm going to give each of these aspects a score out of five. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you my recommendation on the type of brewery that you should buy for your build project. So first up, let's talk about an electric brewery. Electric breweries are probably the most simple in terms of how they work. It's really simple. You basically take a heating element, you stick that inside the vessel and the heating element heats up the liquid that's inside the vessel, just like your kettle at home in your kitchen. So when it comes to procurement costs, electric breweries are generally the cheapest to buy. And the reason is, is that the fabrication and the engineering is really simple. All you need is a vessel. Uh, it doesn't need any jackets or anything like that. Uh, and it needs an electric element, which are also relatively cheap. And you basically got yourself an electric brewery. So for procurement, because they're relatively cheap, it's gonna get a two and a half out of five dollar signs. When it comes to commissioning costs, uh, electric breweries are actually pretty cheap to commission. Basically, all you need to do is to give them a source of electricity and it's plug and play. Your building might need some upgrades to be able to support the amount of electricity that your brew house might consume. But apart from that, there's not really much else that needs to be added. And because the brewery is electric, you don't need any flu stacks and you don't need any fire approval. And so for commissioning a electric brewery, because they're also relatively low cost to commission, that's also two and a half out of five dollar signs. When it comes to running costs for electric brewery, unfortunately with electric breweries, this is where they fall down because electricity is one of the most expensive ways to heat liquid. And because electricity is a really inefficient way to heat liquid, it's gonna get a five out of five dollar signs for running costs. When it comes to scalability and flexibility of an electric brew house, there are some certain limitations. So firstly, most electric brew houses operate on a single infusion mash system. So you can't do things like step mashes. The other thing is they tend not to scale. Uh, typically an electric brew house will scale right down to sort of one barrel or one hectolitre 
but they can only really scale up to a maximum that I've seen of about 15 hectolitres or about 13 barrels. If you turn the electric elements on and there's no liquid in the vessel, you can actually burn out those electric elements and they can be very expensive to replace. The other thing that you need to consider is when you're boiling wort, you need to make sure that you've got a good rolling boil. If you've just got a little simmer going in your kettle, it's not gonna drive off that DMS and you're gonna wind up with those corny flavors in your beer. So for electric brew houses, when it comes to scalability and flexibility, it scores just two and a half out of five stars. The second type of brew house we're gonna look at is a gas direct fired brew house. Gas direct fired brew houses are pretty cool because how they work is basically you'll have a vessel full of liquid and you'll have a gas flame sitting underneath the vessel and that'll heat the contents of the tank. It's just like the gas stove in your kitchen. When it comes to procurement costs, the gas direct fired brewery is quite similar to an electric brewery in terms of the vessels themselves because they're, they're relatively simple. The additional cost that you're gonna have with regards to procurement is you're gonna to need to buy a gas burner to go under each vessel. And the gas burners themselves are slightly more expensive than an electric element. So when it comes to procurement costs of a gas direct fire brewery, I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five dollar dollar bills. So when it comes to commissioning costs, the good news is, is that you don't need a separate piece of infrastructure like a boiler to power your vessels. You just need someone to be able to hook up the gas burners under each vessel. Now that means that you're going to have to hire a gas fitter to be able to commission those burners. You'll also need to have a system of flues uh, to support each of the gas burners. Now in most cases, you'll just need an exhaust flue to take all of the exhaust gases out of the building, but in some jurisdictions, you might need an inlet flue as well. So in terms of commissioning costs, it's a little bit more expensive, so I'm gonna give that four out of five dollar bills. So when it comes to running costs, the really good news is that a gas direct fire brewery uh, can save you a lot of money. Uh, natural gas and propane are much cheaper sources of energy per kilojoule than electricity. And because they operate more efficiently, your running costs are gonna be significantly reduced. However, if you don't properly configure them, uh, then you can wind up in a situation where the exhaust gases coming out of your uh, gas direct fire brewery are quite hot and there's a lot of wasted energy. So when it comes to running costs, gas direct fired breweries get a three and a half out of five dollar bills. ka -ching! So in terms of flexibility and scalability, gas direct fire breweries are the next level up from an electric brewery. The reason is, is that you can actually start heating the wort as soon as the bottom of the kettle is covered and that can save you a lot of time on brew day. Gas Direct Fire Breweries can also go much larger than an electric brewery. I've seen Gas Direct Fire Breweries up to about 25 hectolitres or about 22 uh, barrels and they've operated just fine. Another thing you need to consider is the way in which the heat is applied to the kettle. So they can be a little bit laggy in terms to start after you turn on the burner. And also when you turn off the burner at the end of the boil, there can be a lot of carryover heat and the boil can actually continue for a few minutes after you turn off the flame. You can also attempt step mashing with a gas direct fired mash tun, but you've got to be careful because uh, if you don't watch it, you can actually scorch your mash. And the really important thing about uh, a gas direct fired brewery is you need to be wary of the carbon monoxide risk. Because you're burning inside an enclosed space, you need to make sure that you've installed all the flues and that your gas direct fired brewery has been approved by your local fire department. So as far as flexibility and scalability goes, a gas direct fired brew house gets a three and a half out of five stars. The last type of brew house we're gonna talk about today is steam. Steam is amazing. So basically how steam works is there are jackets around the sides and at the bottom of the vessel and steam is passed through these jackets which transfers the heat into the contents of, of the vessel. You'll need a boiler at your brewery to generate the steam and then you'll need special pipe work plumbed around your brewery to take the steam from the boiler to the vessels being heated. Steam also works at very high pressure so there's a lot of safety considerations you need to be mindful of. So when it comes to procurement costs of a steam brewery, uh, the fabrication of a steam jacketed vessel is a little more complicated than say an electric or a gas direct fired. You actually need to fabricate the steam dimple jackets around the sides of the vessel and that can increase the cost of each vessel slightly. 
You'll also need to buy a boiler. Now the really important thing is this is a high risk piece of equipment. So make sure that you buy your boiler from a licensed and reputable dealer. If you choose to buy a boiler, say from a manufacturer in China, it might not be up to code for your country. So my advice to you is make sure you buy your boiler locally. This means it's gonna be more expensive, but it's gonna save you a lot of headaches down the track. So when it comes to procurement costs, the steam boiler is five out of five dollar bills. So when it comes to commissioning costs, there's two factors that you need to take into consideration. Firstly, you'll need someone who's licensed to come and commission your boiler. And secondly, you'll need a steam fitter to be able to run all of the steam plumbing around your brewery. And this can be quite expensive. So when it comes to commissioning a steam brewery, again, it's gonna be a five out of five dollar bills. Even though the procurement and commissioning costs of a steam brewery can be quite high, the great news is, is that the running costs of a steam brewery are significantly lower. The reason why is that steam runs on pressure. And so the energy that you use and the flame that's required uh, to heat the steam only comes on when you need steam pressure. So when you're not using steam pressure or you're not trying to heat anything, the boiler actually switches off and sits there idle. But the really important thing is that you need to make sure that your steam lines are suitably insulated so that you're not wasting any energy. So in terms of running costs, steam is really, really efficient and therefore it's a two and a half out of five dollar bills. So when it comes to scalability and flexibility of a steam brew house, steam is amazing. It's super flexible. It can scale right down to nanobrewery size and can scale right up to hundreds or even a thousand hectolitre or a thousand barrel system. Kind of like the big industrial breweries use. The other good thing about steam is that it's very gentle uh, when it's heating. So the risk of actually scorching your mash or your wort is really, really low. And the best thing about a steam fire brewery is if you want to undertake a full step mashing program, steam gives you the ability to do that with ease. For scalability and flexibility, steam gets a five out of five stars. So which type of brewery are you looking to buy for your brewery build project? Let me know in the comments below. So if we take a look at the scores from all of the different types of brewery side by side, we can see that there are pros and cons of each. In this case, we can see that procurement and commissioning costs appear to be inversely proportional to running costs. So the more you spend up front on procuring and commissioning your brewery, the more you'll save money down the track on running costs. And the same goes for scalability and flexibility. By budgeting more for equipment up front, it means that your equipment will be able to scale and grow as your brewery business grows. If you want to know more about how I can help you build and run your dream brewery, check out my free training over at rockstarbrewer.com forward slash free training. So my advice to you for choosing the right type of energy source for your brewery build project is this. If you've got a brewery that's going to be up to about 10 hectolitres or 7 barrels, an electric brew house is totally decent. The procurement costs are low, the commissioning costs are low. You can only do single infusion mashing, but that's good enough just to get you started. They're a good system for up to about that size. If you're looking to build a brew house that's slightly larger, say in the 10 to 15 hectolitre or seven to 12 barrel range, uh, gas direct fired might be the right choice for you. The reason is, is that when you're getting to that size, uh, electric tends to struggle and gas direct fired will save you those valuable energy costs. If you're thinking of doing anything larger than 15 hectolitres or say 12 or 13 barrels, I would definitely consider steam as the right energy source for your brewery build. Steam is also my personal choice in terms of flexibility because the good thing about steam is it can scale all the way down to one barrel and it can scale all the way up to almost infinite size. They really are a great all-round solution. Whether you're thinking of starting a dream brewery or growing an existing brewery, I can help you. Head on over and check out my free training at rockstarbrewer.com forward slash free training. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.